This is another update of my CNC plasma table build. Um, about a week since my last uh, last update, uh, as far as video uh, for you guys watching uh, on Plasma Spider. Um, this is uh, the third one I posted. Um, to show you guys what I got going on here. Uh, my air comes in. I had a couple of couple of drops here. Comes up. There's a. Uh, a valve here to a drain here comes back up over drops down uh, I have one run that uh, is just straight air into my hose reel for general use um, before I uh, before I have anything that hits the plasma comes out there's a water filter separator comes out of there goes into a second filter and uh, regulates the pressure down comes out of there drops down into the ever popular deaquavator this is basically a, um, a an air dryer that came out of a dentist office that was being remodeled and I gave forty dollars for it off of Craigslist and it works pretty darn good so we come out of there and we go into a desiccant dryer and uh, out of there finally into the power max 1250 so that's my air setup, and uh, here's my control computer. Uh, I mounted my box on the wall today. Ran a few wires, serial cables. It's a Duramax upgrade torch. This is basically the same consumables that uh, uh, 65, the, the new 65 and 85 uses, uh, from what I understand. Uh, this torch can be shortened down. This section can be taken out, and you end up with a. Uh, miniature torch and uh, just depending on how uh, my setup works out with my slats and, and my uh, my z-axis uh, dictate whether or not I turn it into a mini torch or whatever um, I'm planning to just put up a jib arm and um, running down to my gantry that way okay so just a quick update on the table um, gantry is pretty much done I ran some uh, some really nice, highly abrasion resistant uh, cable wrap um, into some uh, heat shrink tubing. Ran that wire through uh, the center of the gantry, the 8020 stuff. Okay, that comes over, and then on my on my other motors, they connect up here. Same thing, heat shrink tubing going into the wire wrap into my E chain. Comes out of the E chain, and I actually drill the hole on the back side of my gantry and have those wires running in there. They link up with the wire from the other side, and all three exit on this side of the gantry again with the cable wrap. Uh, split the loom, ran this motor wire up into the loom. Hit it with uh, with the heat shrink into the E chain, and uh, and down it goes. Uh, yesterday I finished my uh, my mount here. Basically, took a piece of three inch square and uh, notched it open, drilled it to half inch. There's my bearing carriers there, and I uh, don't know if you can see it. There's just a, a bolt there that's locked tight with a collar on top all tightened up and then a piece of one inch by half inch metal bar drilled every six inches and just attached to the top of the gantry with T-nuts and, uh, and the spring loading works pretty darn good so that's all ready to go and uh, I gotta say a great big thanks to uh, to Bill, plain old Bill, on the on the uh, on the forum. Uh, he came over to visit today, and he knew I needed a piece of uh, e chain, and uh, totally hooked me up. So we did a little horse trading, and I ended up with two really nice pieces of e chain that just are really really nice. Uh, so I welded on little support today. It's gonna work out nice. Anchor it down here. And then actually, I'm going to weld a little step on here, so that when I'm up uh, fiddle farting around with the with the uh, 
with the plasma, uh, I got something to step up on. So, uh, the other thing, when I ordered my motors, Tom asked me specifically if I wanted longer cables on my motors and uh, didn't think I needed them at the time. I was wrong. You were right, Tom. So, uh, you can see the little piece of blue tape in there, um, taped the wires together when I was pulling them. So, I have to do some splices to get this last little bit over to the controller. So, no big deal. Just some extra time spent uh, doing what I should have done in the first place and just ordering longer cables. So, no big deal. Uh, so that's it. That's a, a update on my table. So far, I'm really happy with the way things have gone. Uh, this has really tested my skills um, on, on every front: electronics, uh, fabrication, cutting, welding, uh, everything. So uh, I'm really, really happy with the results so far. So um, once I get the uh, the controller hooked up and configured and cutting. Uh, Man, if I could do a backflip on camera, I would, but uh, that's not going to happen. So there's, a, there's an update on my CNC table build. Um, going to try and be in the shop tomorrow, uh, extend those cables, hook up the controller, uh, do a little bit of playing around, uh, just cleaning up, uh, wrapping cables, zip stripping them, uh, and maybe even installing some software and doing some configuring. Um, never know, Sunday might fire it up just to see if this thing will move. So uh, stay tuned and um, thanks for all the help and support. Uh, thanks a lot to, to Bill. He's been a real big help, uh, pointing me in the right direction, giving me ideas uh, that I then took and, uh, and uh, used and tweaked a little bit uh, to the way I wanted to build the table. So, so far, I think it's been a pretty clean build. The install of all the cabling is pretty clean. Uh, the way I came up with the gantry, I'm really satisfied with. Uh, rolls really nice. Uh, lot, uh, not a lot of resistance. So uh, I'm just hoping it uh, yeah, the weight doesn't become an issue. I, I think I'm right at around 80, 90 pounds or so. Don't think I topped out over 100 pounds on the gantry. So uh, according to Tom, as long as I'm under 100 pounds, uh, the motor should do a really good job of moving this gantry and uh, give me some good cuts. So there's my table update. Uh, stay tuned, and hopefully within the next week, we'll be cutting some steel on this thing.